Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors on Western Chester. Glad you're here with us on this Monday morning. Got a big week planned, some special guests coming through this week, and a lot of good shows coming up, and we appreciate your loyal viewership. Our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard, and hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. It's going to be warm again. How about in the low 90s? And uh, it's going to be, uh, uh, low's going to be 80. And, you know, big thing, we're in these long days now. Believe it or not, our days are starting to get shorter. <laughs> June the 25th was our longest day of the year. Now, days are getting shorter. But I tell you, day break's coming early. So that's, that's been really nice. These early morning day breaks, so it's just nice and cool. If you don't get a chance to get out then, then try to get you some time to get out early in the morning. Water temperature in the end of the pier, folks, going up to 87 degrees. That's warm. Take a look at our, our moon phase on Monday, brought to us by good folks at Panama City Coca-Cola. We have the uh, new moon, the full moon coming up in about two, in about a week and a half would be the full moon. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Good tide today. Now looking on for the rest of this week, uh, this weekend we'll have some uh, sort of some neat tides, but the next couple of days will be good strong tides. High tide is going to be at 12.01 p.m. It's going out till about 10.30 tonight. All right, and the wind south southwest at about 11. Let's take a break. We'll come back with our special guest. Okay, welcome back. I want to welcome our special guest this morning, Flint Norris. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, glad to Finally. Have, glad to have you. Flint and I, we talked a good while and we've been trying to get him on. And uh, Flint's got an amazing background in the outdoors and all. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself, Flint. Well, Coach, I, I was born here. Uh, yeah. 1966, uh -huh. December the 27th, and I have been in the Panhandle outdoors, mm -hmm. as far as I can tell, yeah. <laughs> since then. And your mom, was, real quick, she was a teacher, she was a librarian at Highland Park. Highland Park Elementary School. And they named the library after her. Waving C. Norris Media that, that's a, And that's to anybody probably. that knows her, they realize why they did that. Yeah. You know, I mean, she's a special lady. Special lady. Uh, really, yes. Really cool. One of a kind, uh, yeah. I would say. Yeah, that's an, quite an honor. But you've always loved to do outdoor stuff. And uh, you've, you've been experienced, so we're going to I did. It. And, and yeah. since you mentioned my mom, that's a pretty interesting story. Mm -hmm. When I was about 19, she said, Flint, you need to figure out some way to get somebody to pay you to ride around in the woods. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm going to have to think on that one That's for a minute. A good idea, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> she had some good ideas. Uh -huh. Some real good ideas. And that's what you ended up doing. You would... As luck would have it. So you know you, I mean. you've been logging and fishing and all what, a little bit of everything, or what all you been doing? Well, just the timber business and just the fishing business, basically. Yeah. That covers the woods and the water. That's. <laughs> I, I, you, I think I can speak on Panhandle Outdoors, you, you, hopefully. You spend a lifetime. A uh, lifetime a, an entire lifetime up until today. Uh, that's awesome. And, and I plan on today spending the rest of my lifetime doing it. That's, that's awesome. Well, what are some of we got all kind of experiences and all. You, you went into the timber business, so you were a logger and just... Was in uh, procurement timber. Okay. End of it. Um, I worked in sawmill procurement for about 16 or 17 years. Mm -hmm. And then I went into business with a friend of mine uh, and we were timber dealers mm -hmm. and loggers. Uh -huh. So uh, that's that's the way that I made my living. Okay, and then also you did some uh, commercial fishing. Did. Um, uh, they've made what I did pretty much illegal for commercial fishing well, yes, with a before, net. Before the know, net ban. But yep. Before the net ban, yeah. I, yes, I was yep. part-time commercial fisherman. Well, I know a lot of the folks you fish with, the Richardsons and uh, some other folks. Rich, I fished for the Richardsons yep. and around the Richardsons yep. and the bar fields and, and the rest of the people that, you know, that came, mm -hmm. that, that made their living here working this land and this, mm -hmm. this water. Um, and that's the people that I respect. Uh, yeah. And wanted to be like. And, and you, uh, like I say, spent your lifetime in the woods and water, so you would, you would hunt some and you would fish some, and hunt some and fish some. I enjoy eating venison, <laughs> and I enjoy eating fish. <laughs> I believe that they're healthy 
force. They really um, are. And, and for some reason, my palate just seems to prefer that. <laughs> so, but it's gotten very expensive for me to eat lately. I'm telling you, the fish is something, it's something else. Well, try deer meat out by the pound. <laughs> and that's what I try to feed my family with. And that's amazing. You, you don't want to add up the amount of money you spent on, on deer meat. <laughs> but it's, it's my fun. calculator does, Speaking, not, okay, does not you, work like that. You did bring one, you did bring one really good picture here of, okay. uh, of uh, this group. That, right there's, here. there's you some hard work in okay. this picture. Tell us about these folks here. This is back in the winter. This is in winter time. Uh, that would be in January. All right. Uh, sometime around probably the middle or latter part of January. That seems like when our deer move. Now, what is. hunting club is this? This is Moccasin Creek Hunting Club. All right. Uh, and I'm a member of Moccasin Creek Hunting Club. They're and right. I'm proud to be a member. I and those some, people yeah. right there are all good members. Yeah, I know quite a few of them. There's old Eric Melvin about there. <laughs> and the King there's Earl, Elliot in the back. I'm glad y'all put him in the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows where to get for a picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good picture there. So anyway, so you love... You, you uh, this is your garden right here? Or? This part's of it, yes. Sir. Uh, and what I did this year, I have a lot of deer at my house, around my house. They made a development behind it, and yeah. it's kind of pushed all the deer right on the little piece of property that's still left. Uh -huh. So what that does is really makes it difficult to grow anything to eat. So if you'll notice in this picture, you can see my dog pen in the background, and I okay. keep my dog pen good and clean. Okay. Uh, and and I just planted around it because the deer will not come right there and eat it. What a great and, idea! Well, I planted the same stuff a hundred foot from the dog pen. Uh -huh. It didn't they, make it. They ate all this up. right here is thriving. <laughs> You know, that, that, we talk about that. You, know, you, you planted big fields and all, and I had a bit of grunts on last week, and they don't matter how much they love soybeans, they, they love to get out of these fields and eat, and they're going to eat. So, soybeans, soybeans yeah. are a four a deer. Yeah. I don't think of, there's anything that you can grow that's better. What for else do you grow other than, uh, I see okra here. And, uh, a lot of peppers, yeah. tomatoes. Uh, I don't grow many peas because I can't, you yeah. know, I mean, I have to buy my peas, which turns out better anyhow, or pick them from somebody else's <laughs> place, you know what I mean, and shell them, which I don't mind doing, and yeah. got some good friends that are good at growing peas. Yeah, so. I, I love those vegetables too, especially yes. this time of year. Yes, And yes. we're gonna get, uh, we've got some pictures coming up, we'll, we'll take a break in a second, but we've got, okay. I, I know we always talk about the electronics, when, when you first started fishing until the what we have now electronic, it's been amazing at the development of it, it has. and we've got we've got some uh, p pictures you brought so let's take a quick break we'll be right back with flint okay welcome back welcome to fellow outdoorsman uh flint norris has come here to share a lot of things we're talking about your, your first job you were fishing was 13 years old who'd you go with 13 um Hired on with Joe Ed Davis um, as a deckhand. Yeah. And my first paying trip was a two day trip on the Gemini Queen. Oh, man. With Captain Feeney. Oh, oh, man. What, what a great. <laughs> and I was yeah. 13 yeah. and I was born in 66. I don't know the math on uh, what year seven, that was, but we did back then, we caught fish. Oh, a two day trip. That had been awesome. I mean, two yeah. day trip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably 40 people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you got to work with the Davises, and you worked with different different ones. And Absolutely. All. You got to fish with Bobo Hobbs. Absolutely. The first time that yeah. I ever, the, the yeah. first time I ever threw up on a boat <laughs> from being seasick was well, on the Ocean Queen well, you, on a 15 hour trip with Bobo, yeah. me and my dad. That's, so. that's, cool. that's cool. And uh, the Queen Fleet was something else. That, 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 that was, was my something. first job, and, and when I was not working, when there weren't days to work, I deadhead. Work. You know, I mean, you could you could run, you could you could you could ice the boat and help in the morning and fish all day and clean the boat up and clean it when you got done and it didn't cost anything. And back then, yeah. you could drag your fish uh, down there to Buddy Gandy's, yeah. whatever you caught, and 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 that was your pay for the day. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. and it, win, worked, it was perfect. That deadhead, we call it. That's when somebody got on and did something like that. It was right. a win-win. It was a win for the captain because he had somebody cleaning the boat, and doing all that stuff. Didn't cost me anything. That's right. It went for the fishermen like you. Absolutely. You walk a little bit and catch all of the fish. I could make $25 a day catching I, fish. Amazing. And that's about what you'd wind up with, <laughs> you know what I mean, when you got back. So that, and that's what, the, that's what the pay was. <laughs> it was, um, 
Well, when I first started, a 15-hour, 2 o'clock trip was $35 to the deck can, and a 10-hour trip, 7, 7 o'clock, was $25. Oh, Lord. Plus tips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that leave you a dollar too. But some of them, I know some of them, I've, I've been on those folks, some of those guys coming in from Birmingham were very nice guys. They, they are, really? and, and this was a long time ago, yeah. and I met, and there were some generous people yeah. that I met yeah, good, on good and had, and that was good times. That was the fellow, whole thing was. I said, was fellow fishermen, fellow outdoorsmen, they appreciate the work that exactly. they did. Exactly. Yeah, they understood what you had in yep, you know exactly. what I mean and wanted you know and and, you, and they understood that you were there to help them and exactly. I appreciate folks that well you go back you know, okay let's, let's talk about electronics because back in those days we always talk about that paper machine bubble I could see a bubble with Hobbs that old paper coming had out a, had a and very it, distinct smell had a smell <laughs> it did but it was it was big time it was a big deal to them because it just showed them some things and they thought man wow what it showed them what I could tell, what they learned from that paper machine, more than seeing the fish, was how hard the bottom was and what was there if there was a piece of structure. They didn't. They they knew if they could find hard bottom or structure, yep. the fish were going to be there. They did it with a lead and soap back in the day. We talked about that. Yeah. You know, I, right. it's, yep. and they and how many fish so, did they catch? <laughs> yeah. They caught more than the fella that's got the spot lock trolling motor. And it, it, what was so great, they were able to do it then, but then they thought they'd advance so much with that paper machine, which now is obsolete. So now, uh, especially the last 10 or 15 years, the advancement in uh, these electronic machines are amazing. And we've got some pictures here. Let's see, this is a low the, the, here, Here's okay. technology at work. This right is technology. Here. Well, let's look at this picture right here, Flint. So tell us, what, what does this tell you as a fisherman? That says that we're in uh 647 foot depth whoa and that there is fish there that are close <laughs> to the bottom good, so it, that all, looks like a good place to fish too. all right so all those little all, all those little marks at the bottom it's all fish yes okay. as far as i know yeah. yes so uh this would be 600 feet this would be commercial that right, that particular that particular location is on that that, that offshore pipeline. Offshore pipeline, and uh, so that that tells you a lot right there. So anyway, so our next picture we got this about from different some trip. deep water fish. Deep water fish from that area. From yes. that same area. Look at there. Yep, Kitty Mitchell. Tell or speckle hind, uh, uh, whatever you want to call. We, we don't see this fish a lot. Tell us about this fish. Well. The, it's a grouper, uh, and and it's it's primarily, I think, a deep water grouper. Um, How do you get a name, Kitty Mitchell? Uh, I, I do you not know the name? No, I, I, okay, I, well, I, I story, story is, is story is there was a lady of the evening. I mean, that made her live in, in yeah. the fishing town, and uh, she obviously liked that so particular kind of fish, so she would take that in compensation. <laughs> oh, no. Now, Kitty Mitchell. you asked but, the question. But now, do you, but what's it also a speckled hind? Speckled hind. Yeah. Like a scamp. Okay. Uh, maybe a Warsaw would be similar. It's okay. a different texture f fish and a different flavored fish than the gag grouper or the red grouper, or the, the the more what we call shallow water grouper. Okay, all right. And here's the bread and butter. There, there's hey, that's there's what the Gulf of Mexico is famous for, right? Yeah. The, the red snapper. We, uh, I know you've caught a ton of them over the years and all, but it still amazes me that we still have a bunch of big ones out there. I mean, right now as we speak, they're, they're going out there now. They're going to come back some with some 20, 25 pounders. When 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 I was when I started with uh, with Joe Ed back mm -hmm. in the 70s, we did not catch a lot of red snapper. I believe they yeah. had been caught before that, and what was left was those deep water grouper, what we thought, mm -hmm. 50 miles from here. Mm -hmm. The gags and the red grouper. Well, we've pretty well exterminated a lot of those. Yeah, it seems, yeah. let me rephrase that, it seems to me like yeah. there's not as many of them as there were. Oh, you go on these trips and it's very, very seldom come back with a bunch of grouper. I, mean, I, I know. See that. I see I, that and, 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 and really and truly the snapper to me is, my, is a better flavored fish well, than the grouper. The, the reason the people want the grouper now, they're rare. Yeah. They can go catch the snapper, no big deal. Mm -hmm. That right there, the, that right there yeah. is what people want to catch. Yep. That's what 
is the measure of a good fishing trip when you unload at the dock and how many of those you got. They don't care how many 25 pound snapper you throw out. That right there <laughs> that, is the fish. That, you're exactly about. right. That, that's exactly right. Now this looks good right here. What are you doing here? Well, that's some good fresh vegetables out of my garden and a scamp and a piece of that Kitty Mitchell that oh, was in that picture. Man, um, that looks good. And it's, yeah, I, and I took that, put it on the grill over some uh, pecan wood, uh -huh. cooked it for just a little while, and the vegetables and the fish turned out good. So is that how you like to cook your fish? Or the grill it if you can? I like to grill it. I like to saute it. Yeah. Uh, I love it fried, you yeah. know what I mean, but I don't eat as much fried food as I used to. You, um, you sound just like me. I'm, I'm the same way. I love it. I it's love not because I don't want it. I know. I know. Because <laughs> it's nothing better than a fried fish or a fried piece of venison. I know. <laughs> I, but you know, you, you look at that picture there, and here we are. You got your garden. You so you got your vegetables. So you can grow that. Yes. And sir. you catch these fish. So you supplying yourself. That's the way. I, uh, I, that's I, the way. I, yeah. Okay. As there it is in a nutshell. That's yep. the way I want to live. Yep. Now, how do we get closer back to that? Uh, <laughs> I know. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, let's let's take our final break. We'll be right back with Flint Norris. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a, a quick look at our fishing game time today, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. Our times we're looking at. 150 to 350 this morning and this afternoon from 213 to 413. I know as outdoorsmen, you've seen as uh, a hunter and fisherman, so they just seem to do, you catch them at a certain time of day and then all of a sudden. Boom. Coach, I think it, that all that has to do with the moon. Yep, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Well, getting back, uh, also, uh, the Norris family, y'all have a big family reunion up in Ponce de Leon. We've got viewers up there. We do. Uh, uh, Ponce de Leon is grassroots for us. Yeah, uh, good cur I'm, a, I'm a curry and a Norris, and okay. that seems to be where the curries and the Norrises met one another. All right. And um, well, I'm glad y'all still have the family reunion. We that's, do. That's we good. have our family reunion um, every year at City Hall in oh, Ponce de Leon. Good deal. Good deal. Um, and it's the Sunday before Labor Day. Sunday before Labor Day, always do. And it. good, there will be good cooking there. Okay. And good conversation. <laughs> and and you talking about fishing, going different places. You you've been fishing over on the Atlantic, around the South. I the have. I have in the last. Yes, I did that um, last week. As a matter of fact, um, I have my, my one of my aunts and two of my cousins live uh -huh. in Darien, Georgia. Okay. Which is between Savannah and Brunswick, and. Um, that's it's, a good, that's a good it's all, it's estuaries coming in. It, it's, a, it's the same feel and the same look yeah. and the same productiveness as the marsh in Louisiana. And we went trout fishing. Uh, we went fishing. Yeah. We caught a lot of trout. We caught a lot of sheephead. Okay. Uh, we caught some Jack Creval, uh, ladyfish, uh, whiting, wow. and all of that. All uh, of that? Yeah. And, and so you enjoy doing, uh, after doing some, uh, fishing inshore. So you do some around the Oh, family? absolutely. Yes, sir. Right. I, I love catfishing. I Ooh. love bass fishing. Yeah, uh, you're like I'm me. To keep them. <laughs> I know. I do love catfishing. Listen, this, la this last picture we're going to show, give me that electronics. There's a great story here. Now, looking at it, we can't really tell much, but now, tell us this story, okay? Okay. This is interesting. I'm going to go to center. Whatever we're talking about is sort of being a center of the screen, so, okay. We were fishing this offshore, this has been a couple of weeks ago, and uh, spot lock trolling motor, there's some technology for you. Well, it, okay. what that allows it to do is paints a picture of what's happened. Right. And that last picture, if you'll notice, is that, a big fish coming yeah. out of the bottom and getting a flat line. Okay, it looks like a lightning streak coming down. It okay? looks so, like lightning. So go to the bottom right here. So this is so what happened? There's a fish swimming up. Go ahead. Yep. Exactly. A on. nice. You can see see the good red streak of it right there. You can okay. see that right there. It's a good fish, and you can see right there where it gets the bait. Okay, and right there. And yeah. there's where the fight begins. That's about a 12 pound red snapper. So then from here on up, he's fighting. He's fighting and he's fighting even more as he gets to the top. Yep, and, and if you'll yeah. see right there next to it on the right, and I didn't notice that, that's something else that probably followed that fish exactly. up. Exactly. And then went back to the bottom after it figured out something's 
not right here. That's a big fish that's there on the right. And I did not see that until just then. And it go, you can see it going back yeah, to the bottom. It's, it's going swimming back. away. Yep. It's swimming away. But that's, yeah, there it is right there. I found right. red snapper on the flat line. What a, what a great, what a great story. <laughs> I, and I that, didn't see that yeah. until, I mean, I thought, uh -huh. that, I was just taking a picture of it and then I thought, well, there's a lot going on right there, and that's what that is. Well, again, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, electronics. And it could be super, it's so good and all, but in a way, it has some bad points to it because these old-timers have their fishing spots, and they could, they get sort of zapped. My captain tell me they don't want to be zapped and get the location and give it away. So it, it's been good and bad. So We <laughs> used to we used to do stuff, and we kept <laughs> notes, and they were secrets. Wow, yeah. And that was what made good fishing. Uh -huh. You got a whole notebook full of stuff right this there. This is right just yeah. one, this is a piece. You brought up something really interesting. I don't uh, the picture, show me a picture of a big old pipe here, and I'll, I'll show it to you later. But it's stainless steel, yeah. and, and it lasted a long time, but the fish were not that attracted to it. They That's were not. I mean. They were not, and I was excited about that piece. That yeah. was, I put that piece, we put that the furthest from the pass. Okay. So it would, you know, there was something, by golly, worth the ride, right. and I, we fished it. Yeah four or five, three or four times anyhow. Uh -huh. And as far as I can remember, we never caught a grouper or snapper off of that. We caught some amberjacks. That's interesting. That's but the, you know, I mean, yeah. we made some other stuff out of mild steel and they were the bomb. And you, you have found that the steel and the metal is, that's the best. I think that, I think that fish are as attracted to steel. I think it's, it's as uncanny as the compass needle pointing north. Uh -huh. You can throw a spoon made out of steel uh -huh. and a fish will come to it and follow it. He wants to be close to it. It, be, it, might be it to seems it. to me that yeah. way. That's very interesting though. We've got a lot more stuff. What has happened, I, I, I could tell you, we're going to run out of time. So yes, sir. you got to come back on. We'll talk about these different spots and different pictures and different uh, areas y'all make for fishing and have some of them. I know the storm messed up some of them. Uh, the storm messed up a lot of folks, so I know y'all too. So. The, storm, the, the, storm, the storm messed up a lot of things for it, me. It, it really did. I know it hurt your timber business. and you know, so. Well, it, all it did was just sort of destroy the timber business and the part of the fishing that I like. And well, what I'm interested in now is the restoration of okay. both of them. Well, we'll talk about that uh, next time you come on. So, so glad to have you. Thank you, for, thank you for allowing me. <laughs> okay. Uh, folks, we appreciate y'all watching Panhandle Outdoors do something good for someone today. Enjoy the outdoors, take care of it, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.